coach didn't really exist. Uh, Tim Gergovich kind of invented the job that's become um, uh, a, a huge part of every NBA team this, these days. Um, and so that was the kind of learning and pathway that Jamal came into the league with. And I can tell you that as a first year guy who showed up to help and learn and grow, uh, Jamal turned heads because he was energetic, he was smart, he connected with players, and you knew that even as a rookie, when you stepped on the floor with Jamal, you were going to work and you were going to get better. So Jamal made you take note from the, from the very first time that uh, I was able to kind of experience his, his abilities. And obviously, um, it's been fun to track his career um, since then. He's come a long, long way and uh, had many great experiences, um, last of which was seven years with the Dallas Mavericks under um, Rick Carlisle's uh, uh, expertise and in and, and the last couple of years managing the defense for the Mavericks. So Jamal has a unique set of abilities, his passion, his experience, his ability to connect. Um, he has an amazing interpersonal skill set with, uh, uh, with anyone. And, and, and it's, it stems from his compassion as a person. He's a great listener. He cares. He wants to get involved in people's lives. And he, uh, he's a true coach. He wants to make you better. And uh, where we are, it's a perfect fit. Uh, Jamal will come in and improve our players. They'll, they will know that everything he does is for and about them. And as they get better, we will get better. Um, I have so much optimism and I wish today of all days that we could actually be gathering together. This is a day that I know um, we would all be in the media room. And, and uh, as I've said before, I know how difficult it is for, for you guys, you media members to be covering a team without being able to be around the team. Today of all days, I wish you could be in the same room and we could all gather because um, I'm super excited for you guys to get to know Jamal, to meet him, to experience just his energy and his enthusiasm and um, his intelligence. And so uh, without further ado, I'm gonna pass it over to Jamal and um, say, Jamal Mosley, welcome to the Orlando Magic. So happy to have you. Thank you so, thank you so much, Jeff. I really appreciate it. Um, I just wanna start off by saying um, a big time, a big thank you to the DeVos family for taking me in. Um, the, the family atmosphere that they represent and that what they show is just means the world. I want to thank Alex Martin, Jeff Weltman, um, John Hammond, Matt Lloyd, Anthony Parker for the process, for being as transparent as you were during the entire process and allowing me to be myself. Um, next, I want to thank the Dallas Mavericks for seven great years, Mavs fans and Mavs organization who I've have many great friendships through and I'm just so grateful for that experience. And then I wanna thank all of the coaches that I've played for that have taught me so much. Um, it's just been fantastic. And then I'll say, I wanna thank my wife and my children for putting up with me and going through this entire process with me. I think it's just been fantastic. But now lastly, I will say this, I wanna thank my mom. Um, I look at it as this, 16 years ago, my mom passed. 16 years ago was my first stint in the NBA. And 16 years later, it's my first opportunity as a head coach. And so I look at that and I just, it, 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 the dream for her to be able to see me have the dreams come true is, is just, it's a, it's a blessing. And I'm just, I'm grateful for that. So I just want to say that. Thank you, Jamal. Thank you, Jeff. With that, we will begin with questions. We'll start with Tim Reynolds, Associated Press. Tim? Thank you, Joel. Uh, Jamal, uh, Tim Reynolds with the Associated Press. Congratulations. Yes, Joel, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead, Tim. Tim, I think you're breaking up. We'll come back okay. to you. We'll come back uh, to you. Jamal, again, congratulations. I... Tim, we'll come back to you. We'll come back to you. I think we're having connection problems there. Mike Bianchi, Orlando Sentinel. 
Yeah, congratulations on the opportunity, Jamal. I, I'm just curious. Obviously, the Magic are entering a new phase, as Jeff uh, mentioned, a, a, a rebuild. Uh, there seems to be a school of thought that when you go through a rebuild, you have to sort of sacrifice wins to develop talent, develop young players. Do you adhere to that philosophy, and does that worry you at all? Um, I think the philosophy that you inherit is of growing, developing, and creating winning habits every single day. Um, so now we have to celebrate those small successes during the day as we, as we work with our guys. So it's a combination of both in my eyes. A follow-up question. Uh, I, I hear that you're uh, an MMA aficionado. You train in MMA. In, in any way, does that help you prepare to be an MBA coach? Um, I think it's more of about the mindset in a lot of ways. For me, it's, it's the, the, the grind that you have to go through in order to push through certain situations. Um, that's what it's done for me, helping me and, you know, calm the mind, um, being able to be conditioned in different situations and everything has to slow down for you as the game is sped up in the NBA. This allows your, your brain to slow down a little bit. Thank you. Brandon Kravitz, 96.9, the game. Hey, hey, Jamal, welcome to Orlando. Happy to have you. Um, what was your relationship like with Jeff Weltman? From what I understand, you guys crossed paths in Denver. Am I right about that? And if so, what was the impression there between the two of you? It was, it, we, we did cross paths there. And it was more just learning um, from one another, I, I believe it was. Like he observed me on the court and understood how John and Gerd worked. And it was just more his observation of seeing how I worked. And Jeff was working his tail off the whole time too. So I think that was a big portion of, we were just working our way through things and trying to just understand how we could fit in, this, in, the, in the business for me. Dan Savage, OrlandoMagic.com. Hey coach, congratulations. Welcome to Orlando. Um, you know, what, what are some of your offensive defensive philosophies that, that you hope to bring over here and, and some of your, some of your messages in, in those regards? Um, my offensive philosophy is, is simple. I try to, I want to keep it as simple as possible and I want to play with pace. I want to play with space and I want to play with the pass. Um, I think the pass brings energy to the game and it allows people to be at their best. I want to put these guys in the best position to succeed. Um, defensively, I want to be a tough, um, talkative, high level communication team, and then tied together defensively to be disruptive, um, to take teams out of their sets and their comfort zone. Josh Robbins, The Athletic. Jamal, I'm curious, as you assess this job in the road ahead of you, what do you view as the biggest challenges? I believe daily, we just have to work on getting better. I think we just have to continue to grow and build and keep these guys at a level that they just want to keep coming in every single day to get better and better and better. I think that's the important part of what, what this journey is going to look like. And to follow up, what do you view as some of the biggest opportunities? I believe this is the biggest opportunity for these young guys to see their potential. I think they can really register how, how great they can be within this league and learn the league and tap into that full set of potential as we move forward. Okay, I'm gonna, a question from Tim Reynolds, Associated Press, who texted in. Uh, Jamal, because you are known in part as a strong development coach, is that part of why this was a great fit for you? I believe that was a big portion of the fit. Um, I also believe it's part of how this organization is run and how the family is, as, is how they conduct it. It's a family atmosphere. And, you know, I just believe in the family. I believe in um, the, the ability of this organization to, you know, communicate and keep people together. Adam Shadoff, Fox 35. Hey, Jamal. Uh, it seems to me that everything I've read and seen is that you are known for having very good relationships with your players. Um, what do you think is the most important aspect that goes into building a relationship with players? And how do you do that quickly with an all-new team here? Well, Adam, I really think it's human nature. I, I really believe it's about the human first. I think that's the most important thing. And I just mentioned um, about the family atmosphere. 
So creating those relationships is because you actually, you care about the human being and what's going on in their world. Cause I don't want these guys to think for one moment that it's just about the X's and O's. I want them to become great young men on and off the court. And that's the character of guys that we have. And I want them to understand that I care about that as well as I care about how we can perform on the floor. Darren Stolzfus, uh, West 2 News. Hey, Jamal, welcome to Orlando. You're going to hear the word rebuild from us probably a ton over the next few years, knowing the challenges that are ahead. What made this attractive for you to take as a first, first opportunity as a head coach in the NBA? Well, as Jeff alluded to before, my, my career started in player development. It started with you know two of the best in the game um, at developing players. So this opportunity was about development and growth. And now that this is my first opportunity as a head coach, it's about the growth all around and what can I learn from them and what can they learn from me and how can we just continue to improve daily with work ethic, um, hard work ethic and winning philosophies, winning thought processes and going through that. Lou Kaktrick, Spectrum Sports. Jamal, congratulations and welcome to Orlando. How did the 14 years you spent as an assistant coach impact the type of head coach you want to be in this league? Well, it, it, it allowed me to take some things from each coach. Um, and as assistant, you know, there's things that are on your plate that the, you don't want the head coach to have to worry about. Um, so it allowed me to see every different aspects and it allowed me to create those relationships as well. But it's, it's allowed me to put it all together. I think that's the biggest thing to take something from each stop that I, you know, that I enjoyed that would help me become better. Ryan Welch, WKMG. Hey, Jamal, congratulations and uh, welcome to Orlando. Um, how does Jeff's vision for the future of this franchise, how does that align with your own vision? Question, Ryan. That's the biggest thing about having the going through the interview process and being part of this organization. It's about the alignment. So it lines up. And that's what we talked about from the beginning, that we, we want to be one accord. And I think that's the way, as we communicate, that's the building, that's the growing, that's the growing together, being aligned in a high level of communication. So we make sure that we're all on the same page. Keith Smith, Yahoo. Congratulations, Jamal. Um, you're known as a defensive coach to to a lot of people what what are some of the things you see from from some of the guys on the roster now that you see defensively that that can you can help them bring right out of the gate well I think there's ability that we have with length on this team there's a lot of length on the team which is you know in, in the NBA now is very important uh, we also have guards that can crawl into the ball I talked about wanting to be disruptive um, and tough and we have the roster that is capable of doing that. We have, you know, there's three and D guys here. And we, we just want to have to, I want to be able to put them in the best position uh, to do that. And now we have that on this roster. Aaron Goldstone, Pinstripe Post. Uh, Coach Mosley, welcome to Orlando, to you and your family. Um, considering your background in player development and as an assistant coach, you know as well as anyone the importance of a solid staff. Um, can you comment on where you are in the process at this time of putting together a coaching staff? And are there any names in particular that you can mention that will be uh, coaching with you uh, in Orlando on your staff? Well, I think that's the thing I'm going to get with. We're going to get together. Uh, we talk about the alignment uh, within the organization. And I want to stay on that same path is that we're going to get together and communicate what is the best staff that helps these young men develop into the best that they can be, as well as that helps me moving forward as the head coach. Kendra Douglas, West 2 News. Hey, Jamal, congrats. Um, I spoke with your old college coach this morning, Coach Patton, and um, he speaks highly of you. He feels like a proud dad because of you and Chauncey right now. So um, kind of alluding to that, you and Chauncey both entering as head coaches and becoming part of that group of Black coaches coming into the NBA. Um, one, how does it feel for you to be in this role now um, and, and kind of starting that movement of seeing more Black coaches in the NBA? And two, do you think that will help you grow your bond a little bit and kind of be more relatable to the athletes, um, to, your, to your new guys? 
Thank you, Kendra. I, I think it's 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 surreal is is probably the best way to say it. You know, it doesn't hit home until you know you're just going through it every day, going through the process. Um, and I'm just grateful for the opportunity. That's the biggest portion of all of this that I got the opportunity to to come in and impact and be able to be in the conversation. Zach Makovich, uh, Wesh. Hey, Jamal, congratulations on uh, the job in Orlando and welcome. Uh, have you had a chance to reach out to anybody on the roster yet and kind of get a feel for, uh, for the players that you have now? Uh, there's been a few text messages and, you know, just seeing the guys in the gym uh, able to do that, but I'm just going to wait till I can, you know, get a hold of them and have a real conversation where I'm, it's not, everything's not, you know, scattered a little bit that I can just sit down and, and dive in and, and keep creating those, those bonds. And that's, that's important to me first and foremost. Jake Chapman, Orlando Magic Audio Network. Hey, Coach, welcome. Um, I just want to ask you about your experience in Denver and specifically with Coach Carl. What were a few lessons you learned from him and, and what do you remember about him specifically? Oh, that's a great question. I mean, there's so many. I just, Coach Carl was, was, was fantastic in his way to just be adaptable. Uh, his way about him that he just adjusted in games and he allowed um, the players to you know, get a feel for the game. And th that was, was big for me watching that unfold. Um, his, his demeanor and his ability to just never panic. That was a big portion of what I saw with him. Cody Taylor, USA Today, Rookie Wire. Coach, congratulations. Uh, the hiring, your hiring seemed to be met with universal praise by, by a lot of former coaches and, and players. Just kind of what's your reaction to, to seeing that outpouring of support come in for you? Honestly, Cody, it's it's super humbling, uh, you know, because as a as a coach, all you want to do is make people better. You want to help people reach their potential. And when you see people that you're only doing your job, that's all. That's the way I think about it. I'm only doing my job. So when you see that it's the result that people are happy that you've done your job, then, you know, it's, it's extremely humbling. And I'm seriously grateful for each and every single person that, you know, has reached out and said positive things. So that's pretty much the reaction is just humbled. Chris Krause, 48minutes.com. Hey coach, congratulations. Um, I just want to ask you, um, you were pretty far in the uh, Wizards uh, interview process. Um, obviously two teams on different trajectories. Uh, how much did that play a factor in your decision to, uh, to stick with Orlando? Well, I think we, we talked about the alignment. We talked about the family atmosphere. Um, I think both situations, are, you know, they're different, but at the same time, there's a different, there's a level that I feel here is, is very, you know, it's been, it's true to my heart in a lot of ways. Thanks coach. Christo Saltis. Hello, Mr. Mosley. First of all, congratulations. Uh, my question to you is, what did you learn from uh, Coach Carlisle in seven, uh, after seven seasons in Dallas? And what is the style of play that you, you would like to play in Orlando next season? Coach Carlisle, I learned so much. I can't even begin to tell you. I mean, it was, I, I tell people this all the time. Is it, For me, it was a master class in coaching um, because he was so transparent and his ability to communicate offenses, defenses, the work ethic, working with young players, old players. I learned a ton. I mean, like I said, I'd, have, I'd, it, I'd be here a long time talking about how great the experience was and learning under him as a, as a mentor. Um, the style of play for us, I, I mentioned it early, I wanna play with pace, I wanna play with space, and I wanna play with the pass. I want energy. I want guys to really understand every situation that they're in and have a, a plan and a solution as we go through each sets of the offense. Reed McNaught, Spectrum Sports. Hey coach, uh, first of all, welcome to Orlando. I just wanted to say, I just spoke to a Dallas Morning News reporter and uh, one of the words she used to describe you was prepared and not just you, but also your family. As she said last year, when you were in the bubble, your family knew you were in Orlando and that's kind of about all they really knew uh, when they found out that they're also coming to Orlando now with you, what was their reaction and how is it to have them here in the city beautiful with you? 
my family, like I said before, my family's amazing. And it starts with my wife just being the rock, uh, making sure that my daughter and my two boys are just taken care of. Uh, honestly, the initial reaction was tears. Um, they didn't want to go uh, just because, you know, they haven't, no one's ever moved before. But then we started talking about Disney World and that changed a lot of it. So now they're very excited, very happy to be part of this. John Alba, Spectrum Sports. Jamal, welcome to Orlando. Congratulations on the new gig. Uh, this is a franchise that saw back-to-back -back playoff appearances and then suddenly sold off its franchise cornerstones and now has the fifth and eighth pick uh, in the upcoming draft. This fan base has been through a lot in the past few years. What do you say to those fans who have been told, be patient, there's a light at the end of the tunnel? I believe you have to say, be excited about right now. Be excited for this moment. You're getting to, to watch growth and you can grow with this team and how we develop and how we play exciting basketball and how we play with joy. I think you have to be excited about that. So being ready and willing to grow together. Right. Go back to Mike Bianchi, Orlando Sentinel. Yeah, I have a question for Jeff and a question for, for Coach. Coach, your, your question, you mentioned your staff. You coach with Daryl Armstrong in Dallas. He obviously is a sort of a hero here in Orlando. Is he somebody you might consider? And what do you like about his coaching style? And Jeff, how, can you tell us about how many people you interviewed? It seemed to be quite a, a, a extensive process. And there seemed to be a lot of leading candidates during the, uh, during the process. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let Jamal go first. It's, it goes back to what I said before. I really think when we talk about the alignment, we talk about uh, making sure we put the best people in place to, to help these young men grow and develop and create great habits. Um, so that's going to be discussions throughout the week and weeks forward of, of what we, how we need to put the best people in place for their support as well as mine. Thank you. Uh, Mike, you know, um, I would say we, we met with approximately a dozen people. Um, you know, we started out with a priority list of guys and we, um, we, we met with everybody in that list and then, and then expanded it as we went just to be thorough. Um, I, as you know, I never comment, uh, you know, confirm or deny anything once we begin the process. So <laughs> all the leading candidates that you may have read about, um, you know, I wasn't the one that labeled them such, and I don't know where that stuff comes from, honestly, sometimes. Sometimes guys get it right and sometimes they don't. But, uh, you know, obviously I have to respect that everyone that we meet with has a career and their own um, path to, to, you know, move down. And we have to try to respect that. So obviously, you know, you guys know that we're going to be pretty discreet about how that process goes. Um, the most important thing to us is that we find the right guy. And, um, you know, I believe that we have and, and, and you know, um, I'm very excited about it. Um, I, I just want to add, because a lot of the questions come in about um, the player development side. And, you know, there's an old expression in this league, you are how you come into the league. And generally, it's, uh, I think, more directed towards players. But I think it's true of us, too. And I know for myself, I came in doing video and scouting. And this year was really hard because we were not allowed to scout. And then that's, that's kind of like my career DNA, you know. And Jamal's career DNA is player development. That's how he came into the league. It's what kind of brought him up the, up the ladder. That said, I also want to reiterate this. You know, someone uh, um, very smart once said to me, your coach has to be smarter than you. And I, I want to say it again. This guy is really smart. He is a strategic thinker. And coupled with all of his uh, interpersonal skills and his player development approach, um, and his just natural ability to connect uh, and create boundaries and push people. Um, he's got a unique set of abilities. And so that's what, that's what led us to hiring Jamal. Okay, time for a couple more. Luke Hectric, Spectrum Sports. Jamal, there's been a lot written about your relationship and your bond with Luka Doncic. How do you go about bringing in star players to Orlando through free agency or trades? Well, first, you're not going to get me fined 
on my first day for talking about a young man that is is is, is everyone in the league knows exactly what he is and how great <laughs> he is. Uh, that's understood. Um, I think as you start talking about free agents and bringing people in and, and this and whatnot, I think it always goes back to exactly what we said before. It's the relationships. That's the important piece. It's it's making it's helping people understand that you're more than just a basketball player that we care about you. And that's what this organi organization represents, the family atmosphere about wanting to be here. That's what's a, that's the important piece. That's how people want to come. Joe Kepner, WFTV. Hey, Jamal, welcome to Orlando. Uh, a couple questions for you. I, I'm curious, Jeff keeps calling you a smart guy. In my experience, smart people read a lot. Are you a reader? And, and what sort of books are you like? Do you have a favorite book or a book that you're reading right now? Give us a little insight into your character. Um, and then also, you, you mentioned and talked about how as an assistant coach, you, you had responsibilities and were more hands on in ways that you can't be as a head coach. Is there something that you're kind of excited to now be able to delegate as a head coach? And are you, is, is it going to be easy for you to delegate and get rid of some of those responsibilities that you're so used to having? Well, you threw a lot out there for that one, Joe. That was, that was good. That <laughs> yeah. Was good. Sorry about that. That was good. Um, I would say the two books I'm reading right now is uh, Extreme Ownership by Jocko Willink. And the second one is um, you went in the locker room first. I believe that's John Gordon and Mike Smith. Um, those are two books that I'm reading as of right now, just because it talks about leadership. It talks about taking ownership. It talks about responsibility. It talks about the relationships, all of those things that, that kind of embodies what it means to, to be a head coach and a, as a leader. Um, the second question is, am I looking forward to anything to, to delegate? Um, I think that's a big portion of like how we, we talked about aligning the staff. Um, but I just want everybody to be on the same page. And I think when you start talking about the, the delegation, that's important, but I think it doesn't really matter in some ways, because if we're all on the same accord, we're going to be speaking the same message and getting the same, trying to get the same result out of our guys. Keith Smith, Yahoo. Uh, my question's for Jeff. Jeff, with the hiring of Jamal, and kind of starting over with the roster and the two draft picks and the new facility opening, does it feel like in the time you've been here, this is really like launching a new era for the magic? Yes, it very much feels that way. And, um, you know, I think that um, I want to say that I think it was important what we did in the years leading up, you know, because the team had not been in the playoffs for many years and, and we, and now we have, we made the playoffs for two years in a row and our young guys um, experience that and they know what it takes and they know what they're striving towards. But there's no doubt that there is a this is a new day for the Orlando Magic. And as I've said before, and I don't want to kind of make this about that, but uh, yeah, we, we have um, a host of very talented, high character young players who are really excited about playing with one another that have been um, brought into this league the right way. And we have flexibility and extra picks and now a coach to be the point of the spear and really um, um, align them and uh, define roles and develop them in a way that will translate to winning. Our guys all understand that this league is about winning. It's not about coming in and trying to score points and outdo your teammate. It's about winning. And Today is, it is a new day for us. It is a new phase of our, of our program. And, uh, you know, it's going to get labeled whatever you guys want to label it, a rebuild and a restart, whatever. But it's an exciting time for us. And um, there could be no better person at the helm right now than Jamal Mosley. Fully believe that. Okay. And the final question goes to Josh Robbins, The Athletic. I've got a surprise for you because this is actually a two-part question. <laughs> Uh, for first, uh, I'd like to start with Jeff. Jeff, I think we're all fascinated by the process that um, has been completed. I'm curious about how many hours of interviews did you and your colleagues in the front office have with Jamal before uh, the, the job was offered to Jamal? I don't know, Josh. I would, you know, uh, 
I'd have to do some math. <laughs> but uh, put it this way, when when we meet with candidates, you know, not just Jamal, um, they're long days. You know, I, I, I know that there are some teams that do a couple hours and we don't do that. Um, you know, we, we have very long meetings. We talk about uh, everything from um, experience to um, our roster to, uh, you know, their own um, uh, perspective on the league and where the game is going and, and just get to know them as people and um, have, you know, uh, a few of those meetings. So um, I couldn't put a number on it, Josh, but I could say that, you know, we spent significant amount of time. Uh, Jamal, it's, an important, it's an important hire for us. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's an important hire for us. And I think that the other important part of it, because I'm telling you this, Jamal Mosley has options. Jamal Mosley is considered um, very highly in the coaching ranks and in the management ranks of this league. And it's important that Jamal get to know us as well, because this is all about fit. It's all about um, the right approach. And um, I know the word alignment has gotten thrown around a lot this summer, you know, uh, in respect to our team, but it's about that very much. And so it's important that, that it comes together from both sides. Sorry to add to that, Josh, but it's important to say. No, that's, I'd much rather hear from you than from me, believe me. Uh, Jamal, uh, follow-up question is, uh, what's next on your agenda to, to start to hit the, ground, hit the ground running and achieve all that you need to achieve before you head into summer league? Josh, I think it's, 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 again, it's the conversations on alignment with the staff. It's the conversations with, you know, the players, getting to know them and moving forward and creating a plan as we move into draft and we move into summer league. I think it's just creating a plan moving forward for each piece that we're about to walk into. That's a big portion of it. Great. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jamal. Thank you, everyone assembled today. And we look forward to seeing you real soon.